If Musa al has a right to ask that, you have a right to ask that. That's fine. There are some people you just can't get along with. They're just there to cause you grief. But when it comes to family, it's not about, Ya Allah, get me away from them. Ya Allah, make our relations better. Ya Allah, Master, make us, and, you know, grant us from our children and our spouses what, what cools our eyes. What cools our eyes. And Qurra also means in the Arabic language something you can't, there's something that's stationary. So I can't take my eyes off her. I love them so much, I don't want to look away. I love them so much, I don't want to hang out. And when you call mom, mom, I gotta go. And you just can't wait to hang out. Okay, are we done? Are we done? Okay, can I call you back? Can you call you back? I'm on the other line. I'm really not, but I'm on the other line. <laughs> that sort of thing. That just means Qurrat Ayun is not there yet. You can't wait to see them. That's not the case. That's not just not the case, you know? That's the dua we make for family, that those, those tensions, they go away. Now, uh, the last kind of trauma was what? What's the last kind of sadness? Caused by? Ah. And so for most people, when trauma is caused by circumstance, sickness, death of a loved one, things you can't control, right? You know what people do? They have asa. They have a great deal of sadness that transforms into rage, and usually that rage is then directed towards Allah. In that kind of situation, the people of weak faith, they look at that situation and then they turn their rage towards Allah. And they say, why did Allah let this happen to me? Why is Allah doing this to me? Why I deserve better? How could He do that? How could He call, how could he call Himself merciful and loving and caring? And He could do this to me. You know, this, this is a very common phenomenon nowadays. This third type of sadness. That people suffer and then they blame Allah. People have bad experiences and then they blame Allah. You know, the only people who can do that are people who don't know who Allah is. <laughs> you had a long distance relationship with Allah and you made a lot of assumptions about Him. And I've come to learn that about relationships in general, not just with Allah. When you have a friend that you talk to every day, you're on the same page. When you don't talk to them for three, four, five months, then you start making assumptions about how they think or what they think of you. you it just happens. When you have a distant relationship, you have a lot more misunderstanding. And when they even, even if they call you once in a while, you misinterpret what they say. Why? Because you're not in constant contact. You're not constantly speaking with someone, there's more and more misunderstandings. When we're not in constant communication with Allah, we start developing really, really weird opinions about Allah. <coughs> really weak opinions about Allah and what He means to us and how much He cares about us. And then we fulfill what Allah says, أَنَا عِنْدَ you know, ظَنِّ عَبْدِ بِي Allah in a hadith Qudsi, I am as my slave assumes me to be, to me, to be. If He assumes that I don't care, then I'll fulfill it. If He assumes that I love, I'll fulfill that. If He assumes that I will provide, then I'll provide. You give an attitude to Allah, Allah will reciprocate that attitude. So your life will get worse if you have a bad opinion of Allah. And you brought that on yourself. Because Allah says, I will give you based on your attitude towards me. Your, your attitude will determine how, who I am to you. You know, who is Allah to me depends on me. Because of that promise of the, of the hadith. The word, now, now finally, the remedies themselves. I've talked about the different kinds of sadness and this is in my last section, I promise. I'm in that last section. And I want to start this section with one of Allah's most beautiful names, Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahman comes from the Arabic word Rahma, commonly translated as mercy. I don't agree with that translation, much at all. I, it's, it's actually problematic on many, account, many fronts. One of the fronts it's problematic on is mercy is used when you're spared. Like the soldiers showed him mercy. What does that mean? They didn't kill him. When you're playing a game of tag, you ever, you ever play the game mercy even? What's, when did somebody say mercy? Spare me. When the wrestler is holding the guy up in the air, and the guy looks down and he knocks on his head and goes, hey, 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 mercy. What's he asking for? To be spared. And mercy is used in context where something bad is about to happen and then it stops from happening. Thanks for showing me mercy. Sparing someone. So when we think of Allah as merciful, at least in the English language, right? Merciful, we cannot have that connotation. We cannot think, oh, bad things were going to happen, Allah decided not to punish us. No, 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 no. Actually, the word rahma in Arabic comes from rahm. And rahm means the belly of the mother when she's pregnant, the womb of the mother. And the Rahm is actually in a hadith, the Rahm is tied to Rahmah. 
That Allah says the closest, the way you will understand what Rahmah is, is that you will reflect upon what the womb of the mother is. That will give you some idea what Rahmah is. And then you might begin to understand what ar Rahman Rahman is. Who Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, that Ar-Rahman that we call on, who that is. The Rahm of the mother, the womb of the mother, all of us were in it at one point in our existence. Did we have to worry about food, shelter, clothing, or all of our needs, needs taken care of? If there was a problem, who dealt with the problem? The mother did. This womb was, this ha our, was our world, and we were wrapped in care and in love. And we offered nothing but grief to the one holding us. The mother is caused pain by this child. She almost dies giving birth to this child. There is no other scenario in human existence where someone who almost kills you gets all of your love. <laughs> you should be at least mad at the baby. <laughs> you know, it just almost killed me. You know how much I bled for you? You know, at least be mad at the kid, but the mother sees him and does what? Oh, my baby, it was worth it. This baby, even when he's inside, the mother is stretching, he's pulling at her ribs, he's kicking, and all kinds of things, making her throw up. Everything tastes like paper, you know. She can't go to the bathroom easily, she can't sleep. This side, the back hurt, that side, the ribs are he's constantly in pain. And yet, all she has for the child is love. Actually, one of the core meanings of Rahmah is someone who wraps you in his care, because of, motivated by what emotion, by what sentiment? Someone who surrounds you in their care because of love. And no one does that more than Allah. He surrounds us in His care out of His love. That's Ar Rahman. Now if you knew who that is, then you wouldn't be talking about Allah a certain way. You wouldn't be talking about Allah. That's because you cannot cr compare creations to Allah. What your mother did for you in your belly cannot even be compared to what Allah is doing for you all the time. You can't even compare the two. That's who Allah is to us. Al-Rahman. So that's the first remedy in the Quran, the names of Allah and of them Al-Rahman. The, the one we invoke all the time, the one we call on all the time. At the mountain so high, through the tears in